everybody. <clears throat> so I want to apologize for not having a live show last week. Um, my life was in a car wreck and she will be okay. It's been a lot. So um, if you want to leave a comment for more details, but she was in a bad car wreck and um, I probably won't be doing shows this week. Maybe next. I don't think so, but we'll see. So I'm going to do these short videos in the meantime. And this one is week eight power rankings. <clears throat> All right. I'm kind of excited about this. This is pretty fun. This was a tough list to make. It really was because here's the deal. I'm going to leave the Chiefs the number one, but it's not because they're playing that great. The defense is playing pretty dang solid, but the offense has not been that special. And the problem is they're 6-0 and they've won two straight titles. They deserve it. They've earned it until they lose a game. I think other teams are playing better right now, but I'm still going to leave the Chiefs the number one until somebody freaking beats them. They are 6-0. and That is super tough to do when you are back-to-back -back defending champs to come out and do that. I want to know, like, I'm going to have to look up later if that's the first time in NFL history or one of the first. I bet it is. It's probably happened, but very rarely. Number two, I almost put Detroit here. They're looking special, but i got to put the Ravens at two because that offense is ridiculous, not just slinging the ball. They are historically good at running it. Derrick Henry is a perfect fit for Lamar Jackson and that offense and gives them a legitimate chance if that pass D can improve to actually knock off KC in the AFC this year. They got close last year. They are better in offense this year. Isaiah likely has stepped up. They've got Bateman, Zay Flowers, obviously Mark Andrews, and you got the reigning MVP, Lamar Jackson. If they can get out of their own way, they're probably a better team than the Chiefs. Their run D is legit. If they can, like I said, they might be one of those buyers at the trade deadline. I could easily see it. Get it go and get a veteran corner. Some depth, important piece on the defense, but a corner would be really good for them. And that could lift them over the top. They'll probably be buyers because they know they're right there. So, especially when you got Derrick Henry playing like this with Lamar Jackson, you got to take a chance. Um, I've got the Lions at three. I love that win. Goff against pressure. Used to be a pumpkin. Not this year. This dude's looking like a legit MVP candidate. He's got talent around him. Hutchinson was a big loss. They're going to have to go out and replace that. You don't replace Aiden, Aiden Hutchinson, but you've got to replace some of his production in, in um, the, for the pass rush just to give this team a real shot to get to the Super Bowl. Because they they're going to be a playoff threat anyways. But if they go do that, they'll be even better. That's the only scare with them. But they pulled off that road win against undefeated Minnesota. That was impressive. Um, you can call me a homer or not. I've seen it on a website, so I'm not the only one saying this. Green Bay at four. Because, yeah, they deserve it. They are they, – I would like to see – that um, Rundy continue to improve, and if that if Gary can play like he did last week, he harassed CJ Stroud all game long, and it was awesome to watch. And not only that, he and that pasty with their having the two best PFF safeties in the league, we were able to just harass CJ Stroud, and he had nobody open. So not only was he getting people just running him down every play. He didn't have anywhere to go with the ball most of the game either. We let Mixon get going, which I hate. That Rundy could continue to improve. But I want us to go buy a defensive tackle in the, in the trade market if we did it. But we're not going to. But if Jaden Reed can get healthy because he's clearly banged up, that offense will take another gear, hit another gear after the bot. So, got Jackson on the Detroit before, though. So, let's see if we can get to 7-2. and two. Um, I've got the Bills at 5-2. and two. This um, The Amari Cooper trade is vital for that team because they needed a threat at receiver. Um, I still think the defense is young and has got a lot of injuries. I like this team. I just see them as a slight notch below KC and Baltimore, but they are still a talented team. I don't know if I see them as a true legitimate threat to beat any of those two teams, though, and that's why I've got them down to five. I've got Minnesota at six, and the reason why, as much as I like them, I've got Minnesota at six because... I think Green Bay, even though they lost to them once, it was right when Love came back. I think they have a higher ceiling, and then the Lions just proved it in the NFC. So that puts them a third in the NFC, and I don't think they're better than KC or Baltimore. Maybe they could knock one of them off in one game. I did have them as higher than Houston, though, because they beat them. So I've got Minnesota at six. We'll see how Sam Darnold holds up, and if they get Hawkinson back, if that offense can be whole with Aaron Jones. We'll see. Um, Houston I've got at seven because they need some help for Stroud when Nico Collins is out. They had a lot of injuries on D, and they still held up in that game and almost took Green Bay out in Lambeau. I like this team. It's talented, but I see them as a notch below the true contenders in the AFC, but they're still a threat, so that's why I got them at seven. 
I've got the last team in the NFC North at eight, the Bears, because why not? Because that defense is something special, and Caleb Williams is starting to look pretty legit. And if they got a running game to support him and they can protect him, he's got weapons, man. With Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, Roma Dunze, Cole Komet, it's not bad. It's not, that's some weapons. That If he continues to improve while the defense does, this is going to be a scary team. I've got Pittsburgh at nine, and I'm. Th- this is where it got actually really hard for me after it was after Chicago, because <clears throat> Pittsburgh. Here's my concern with them: Is Russ gonna hold up, and is he gonna keep throwing those moon balls, as Chris Collinsworth was saying? And will he give them a, a threat on the offensive side in the air? Because that's what they need. They've needed that. Even though I like Fields and he played solid, decent, played decent, they need a, they need somebody real a quarterback to help that defense out and that run game. So, I've got them at nine, though, because they are five and two with Mike Tomlin, so they're probably going to the playoffs. I got Washington as the last team at ten with honorable mentions to Philly, and even though they're banged up, San Fran. Washington's ten, ten because that offense is lethal, and if that defense continues to improve under Dan Quinn, this team's going to the playoffs. They might even win a playoff game, even with the rookie. They just need Jane Daniels to get healthy. They got He's got to protect himself. That's the key. So, those are my Week 8 power rankings. Please go like and subscribe. I really really want to hit 650, 150 subscribers by the end of October at 615, so not far off. So please go like and subscribe, share with your friends, and I will let y'all know when I'm back with lives, possibly next week. So thank you very much.